Okay, my name is Mike Tatey, and I'm the head men's rowing coach. No, I mean, I, I got into coaching coaching rowing just by, I actually never really wanted to be a rowing coach, but uh, back in 1982, Gavin White, the head coach at Temple, asked me to help with his guys, and we did, and I thought it was a lot of fun, and then then I was uh, I was in the insurance business, and then I got offered a freshman job at Princeton, and then, you know, you know I didn't know if, if I would be any good at it, but, you know, I enjoyed it, and then it just went on from there. Then to the national team, and then head coach of the national team, and then Cal, and then back to the national team. I don't have much involvement with the U19, but for the U23, you have the involvement. I mean, I think, look, it's the collegiate rowing coaches in America really, you know, that's they're producing the athletes for us. And I think that our team right now, the the majority of our team are, are medalists, under 23 medalists from the past two years. And uh, look, we had Mike Callahan and Carlos and Sergio and um, the past two years uh, doing the under 23, Dave O'Neill before that. And it, you know, helped us tremendously. I mean, they, so, so typically what we do is I'll have contact with the collegiate coaches and, you know, generally they'll uh, say, hey, look, we have a kid who's a sophomore I think he might be a good candidate for under 23. Or, hey, this kid can skull, maybe he can, we can put him in a quad. Or, you know, okay, we have a guy, maybe he's not there yet, but maybe we can steer him towards one of the clubs, but maybe in two years. The fun thing for me, really, is, is the diversity of, of the athletes. They come from all over. We have kids from, you know, that are astrophysicists, and we have kids that are investment bankers, and we have kids that, you know, work on engines, and we have, you know, you have from all over the country. And to me, that's interesting. And you think, you know, probably these guys would never be friends or they would never interact. But rowing is that common, you know, platform where they can get together. And, and, and that's what's interesting. You know, generally, you know, you get a little bit of a mix. And um, so, I mean, I keep, I would say that we keep them on a pretty long leash. You know, um, you know, I, our guys, the group that we have, they all work. They all have full-time jobs. So they, they come and row in the morning and they're out of there. They're off to their jobs. You know, I always say the, e the easiest year I had coaching when I coached the national team was in 96 when I had the lightweights because we knew, you know, we had a small group of athletes and we had them all year. The group that we have now, so we have returning athletes from the past two years. But now the bulk of our group is all guys that just graduated last year. So they're new. And a lot of them don't have a lot of experience in small boats, which, you know, we have our selection regatta in pairs. So it takes a little more time. So, so what we're doing, it's more, we have sort of a general sketch of, look, um, you know, we're gonna spend this amount of time in pairs, and then these are the speeds we wanna be able to achieve and then in fours, and then in eights. That happens over time. I mean, that's why they call it, you know, at any, at any university, they have their office of development, right? And, and that's exactly what it is. You're developing relationships with people. So over time, you know, you get to know people. Like I know with, we're training in the Bay Area. That would not happen without the Rogers family. I mean, they kick in, they kick in $475,000 this year. It just would not, we want to survive without that. Um, and then with the National Rowing Foundation, a lot of it's a lot of former rowers that, that give back, they've done well and they give back. And then I think the other thing is, is uh, we also have people who really aren't involved in rowing at all that, that donate to the cause just because they feel like, hey, this is something that we think is good, it's worthwhile. And um, so, so we're as involved as they need us to be, you know. It's like if we need, if, if I say, for example, we wanted to go to a World Cup, for example, and that's going to cost $50,000 and we don't have it in the budget, well, then we'll try to go out and raise it. 